But the youth of Zimbabwe must stand up. There is no Malema who is going to come from here and go and liberate Harare. <laughs> Harare has to stand up for Malema to go there and say, I'm now putting my body on the picket lines in support of the people of Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwean youth must rise because that nonsense will never come to an end as long as there is no unity of purpose against the tyranny, against the suppression of political wishes of Zimbabweans. So it looks like the words of Julius Malema finally got to ZANU-PF. And I must say that ZANU-PF is not impressed at all. They are not impressed at all. And when Julius Malema was in Rhodes University, he said that Nelson Chamisa won the elections in Zimbabwe. And after saying that, the following day, Nelson Chamisa went to Newsroom Live and said that Julius Malema encouraging young people to go back to Zimbabwe is disingenuous. Why would Julius Malema encourage young people of Zimbabwe to go back to hell? So the same people that Julius Malema is trying to defend are now saying, no, man, don't defend us, we don't need you. Because you would think that Nelson Chamisa would say, yes, ZANU-PF has stolen the elections from us, so we want young people to come back here so that we can stand up against this regime of ZANU-PF, so that we can stand up against these people that have stolen the elections from us. But Nelson Chamisa goes on TV and says that Julius Malema is disingenuous. So I'm just wondering, man, is this going to be enough to stop the EFF from advocating for illegal foreigners in this country? Is this actually going to make the EFF wake up and realize that these people that we have been trying to defend actually do not like us? They don't like us. You remember not so long ago, Julius Malema went to Kenya and started running his mouth about Kenya and the president of Kenya. And the, and, and, and the deputy president of Kenya actually had a few words to say about Julius Malema. So the deputy president is clapping back because of that point that Julius Malema made. This interaction and continuous consultation is healthy so that what happens in South Africa can, we can learn from there, you know? And uh, the president from South Africa, one of your people came here to try to lecture us <laughs> about this country. He came in the morning. By two thirty, he knew more than ourselves who have lived here for the last 50 years. <laughs> so we want you to learn from here and quietly whisper your good ideas to these people. So that when we visit other countries, we share our experiences quietly. We don't go to lecture people from other countries because it's, it's an African. It's, it's, it's not good. When you are a visitor, you come to my house. Even if I'm not swept well, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> you just look around and you can whisper to somebody on your way out that you could have done uh, with a light touch, of course. So in a few words, the deputy president there in Kenya was saying, man, please mind your business. Please mind your business. You have no right to tell us how to run our country. And right now, the Minister of Information under ZANU-PF is going to do the same thing. He is going to tell the EFF and Julius Malema to please, man, please, please mind your own business. We don't need you to tell us how to run and govern our country. So is this going to be enough for the EFF to stop advocating for these people? Is this going to be enough for the EFF to now advocate for the closure of borders, is this going to be enough for the EFF to stop to stop telling illegal immigrants to find creative ways to enter South Africa? Is this going to be enough? My name from South Africa, coming from nowhere, talking about succession in Zimbabwe. It shows that this is a foreign agenda, and to whom does? Malema Panda too. He panders to the dictates of 
the post-colonial or of the pre of the colonial company, colonial era company, Anglo-American, which is an offshoot from Cecil John Rhodes, which actually ran this region from Cape Town up to the Copper Belt in Congo and Zambia. And it manifests itself today in an organization called the Brandest Foundation. The Brandest Foundation is the one which authored Mumba of Zambia's document about the elections in Zimbabwe. This is the ilk from which Julius Malema emanates from. So again, don't you find it strange that the same political party that always accuse others of saving the white interest is now being accused of saving the white interest. Normally, this is what the EFF does here at home. Whenever they are confronted with anything, they will just say, no, man, please do not listen to those people. Those people are just sellouts. They are saving the white interest. Do you remember even during the elections, the EFF did not even want to debate the policy positions with the political parties like Rizem Zanzi, Action SA, Build One South Africa, because they say, man, these people are just the representatives of the Rupert and the Open Airmas. So please, South Africans, do not take them serious. And right now, you have the Minister of Information under ZANU PF. He's saying the same thing about the EFF that no, man, these people are just representing the white interest. So I find it quite funny, man, that the same political party that always does that here at home is now being accused of the same thing so it looks like here in africa we have politicians and the political party that will always accuse others of saving the white interest it looks like these kind of politicians always have this line of defense whenever they are confronted eff does it when they are confronted and it looks like zanu pf <laughs> does it too <laughs> he posits as a pseudo revolutionary and a cryptic intellectual. He never pr pr properly went to school. And he propounds big theories about how Zimbabwe should be run, as if it is his own country. At 43 years of age, he's no longer a youth. Who is he from South Africa to try to tell the youths of Zimbabwe who should be their ruler? Malema, Pagati, Papayama. Why? Because he's a friend of Kasukweri, who a few days ago was echoing the same sentiments with the youths of Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe must arise, must arise. <laughs> he, has just run a, he has just been in an election. He comes third for a party which broke away from the NC several years ago. Third from a Umkondo Esizgues MK from Zoom, a party which is hardly six months. It's clear <laughs> that his pseudo-revolutionary message within South Africa has reached a dead end. That's why he could be overtaken. That's why he never made it himself to become the president. So charity begins at home. If you are so good at leadership that you can uh, give strictures to Zimbabwean youth, why not make it success your own homegrown uh, ride to power? So you can hear right now, they are just laughing at him. They are just laughing at him. And I think this is the reason why the EFF must reconsider their stance <laughs> on foreigners. They need to reconsider their, their border policy. Because they are telling him that, man, if you are so brilliant, why don't you do it at home? They are laughing at him. Now your political party is now number four, but you are telling us how to run our country. And this is the same person that has been standing for the people of Zimbabwe. He has been fighting tooth and nail with the people of this country to protect the rights of the people of Zimbabwe that have just skipped the borders to misuse the resources that are paid for by hardworking South Africans. So I think they now need to start reconsidering how they approach these matters of illegal immigrants. Because in an ideal world, you would think that the Minister of Information under Zanu PF would say that Julius Malema, man, of course we, we have political differences, 
but we actually appreciate the fact that our people in in South Africa they feel protected by the EFF. You would think that this person would actually thank Julius Malema and the EFF for the work that they have done to make sure that the illegal Zimbabweans in South Africa are protected. But no, they are just telling him that, man, if you are so brilliant, why don't you apply your brilliance at home? Why don't you apply your brilliance at home? We don't need you to tell us how to govern the country. You are speaking on behalf of Chamis. Chamisa says, no, don't speak on my behalf. I actually do not agree with what you are saying. Man, I hope that the EFF is going to reconsider. <laughs> I honestly hope they are going to reconsider. Their open border policy, their one Africa, we are all Africans nonsense. These people do not like you. Julius Malema, these people do not like you. They don't love you. They don't care that you are fighting tooth and nail with the people here at home to make sure that illegal immigrants are doing as they please. They don't care. They don't care. You look at South Africa, man. You look at South Africa. How many Zimbabweans do we have in this country? Registered and unregistered. How many Zimbabweans do we have in this country? We have millions and millions of Zimbabweans in this country. Some of us actually grew up <laughs> with these people. We have millions and millions of them in this country. So you would think that Zanu PF would say that, man, thank you because those racists and those xenophobes in South Africa tried to demonize the people of Zimbabwe. Thank you for fighting for the people of Zimbabwe in South Africa. Thank you for making sure that the people that are jumping the borders to enter South Africa to misuse the, the, the resources that are paid by hard work in South Africa. Thank you so much for making sure that you making sure that those people are protected. No, they don't say that. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. I mean, like, even right now, if Julius Malama can say one thing about Nigerians, the same Nigerians that he's, he's protecting, you remember the last time he said that the police officers were harassing Nigerians simply because these police officers were doing the stop and goes. They were searching people. They were doing stop and goes. And he says that, no, man, these police officers were harassing Nigerians. And people said, man, how do you know that person was just doing his job or what? How do you know that those Nigerians were, were being harassed? But if today, if he says one thing about Nigerians, I'm telling you that the, the, the government of Nigeria is going to put him in his place. They don't care that he has spoken on behalf of Nigerians. They don't care that he has defended Nigerians time and time again against the, 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 the frustrations of South Africans. They don't care about that. They are going to put him in his place. The same way the government of Zimbabwe is putting him in his place. Of course, maybe they don't agree that, yeah, or they don't agree with this notion of encouraging young people to, to rise up against us. That man, no, no. You know that we are ZANU PF. We are anointed to govern, to govern Zimbabwe. So who the hell are you to tell young people to stand up against ourselves? No, man. We are the only anointed political party in Zimbabwe to govern this country, man. God gave us Zimbabwe to govern. And who the hell are you to tell young people to, to govern against us? But, man, thank you so much for making sure that Zimbabweans are safe in this country. Thank you so much for making sure that Zimbabweans that entered South Africans without the legal documentations are now feeling safe because of your political party. Thank you. You would think that as an OPF would say that. No, they, they are not saying that. They are not saying that. They don't care that EFF has been defending these people for the longest time. So this is the reason why I'm saying that maybe it's time the EFF reconsiders their stance on illegal immigration. These people that you are defending, they don't care about you. South Africans told you time and time again that these people that you are defending, they don't care about you. They don't care about you. On the right to power at Mashambanzo in Pretoria, in Tswane. He can't. So he suffers from the Rhodes Syndrome. And a sick young man comes from Europe, lands in South Africa, Diamonds are discovered. He ends up as the ruler of South Africa and builds an empire from South Africa, dreaming all the Cape to Cairo. These grandiose ideas uh, about an interloping colonial are the, what shapes Malema's mind. He sees himself as the ruler of Zimbabwe. 
you know, as if the people of Zimbabwe on their own are not enough to be ruling their country. We say to him, keep your debt hands out of Zimbabwe's affairs. My <laughs> say to him, keep your debt hands out of Zimbabwe's affairs. Malem, focus on trying to win a South African election. First, that's where there are boundaries. That's where the Limpopo is a boundary between Zimbabwe and South Africa. Uh, you know, he, she has no authority at all to be speaking about Zimbabwean politics. And uh, these illusions and delusions of grandeur of being a latter-day African Cecil John Rhodes, uh, straddling from Cape to Cairo, <laughs> this time he wants to say from, from, uh, from uh, Cape to, to Harare, it won't happen. <laughs> Our youths, I will speak about what they've done for this country later, they will not listen to the nonsense which is coming from Malema. He has no deliverables himself from within his political career, which one can count on. Now you are being told by a charlatan from South Africa to work against a government which has made you so rich that you can account for $2 billion. You think they will listen to him? They won't. This is what Zimbabwe's youth have achieved. So his miseducation and the cryptic knowledge of Malema about school created this subversive combustion which makes them talk about things which are beyond their intellectual capabilities to grasp. Nobody will listen to them because Zimbabwe's youths are achievers. Look at what they are doing with the gold leaf of gold of tobacco. 800 million US dollars every season. Satisfying the best cigarette makers in the whole world. That's why every March they all come to the tobacco auction floors in Zimbabwe. World class tobacco production, Zimbabwe is number one. Who is doing it? Zimbabwe suits. These things would not have been possible without the Zimbabwe revolution. And the stabilization of the currency is seeing this world translate into the pockets of these young people. Now you want to tell them that there is something wrong about their government. Uh, you go to have your head. And again, man, if Zimbabwe is doing so good, why do we have millions of them in South Africa? Why do we have millions of them in South Africa if they are doing so good? This is question that like, this is one question that people are just asking that yeah we hear you are advocating for your country and you are telling us of all good things that young people are doing in this country but why don't we see young people going back to Zimbabwe why don't we see Zimbabwean young people going back if anything they are just coming into the country they are just coming to South Africa get your head examined <laughs> so the Zimbabwean youth they are focused on progress and they see deliverables coming from our president. Obviously, when the Malemas start talking of succession and they are not members of the party and they are not Zimbabweans, it creates anxiety among these youth. So they develop a defensive attitude and they go for strong leadership. That's why they are saying to the president, Rabbi Muripo, because we want to safeguard the wins which we are, we are scoring right now. You have delivered wins. We see more of them coming. We want Burambe Muripo. It's a democratic wish on the part of the youths. After all, it's a revolutionary democratic part. They are free, like the women, like the war veterans, to express themselves on that particular issue. You cannot say they should be stopped from debating, from expressing their intentions. But at the same time, they are also pushing back against the anxiety and insecurity of those who want to become dictators of who should be the ruler of Zimbabwe and who should not be. <laughs> man, I hope this is going to be enough for the EFF men to start thinking about this policy of theirs, of open borders and illegal immigrants, of always defending illegal immigrants whenever South Africans express their frustrations about illegal immigrants, both legal and illegal men at this point. I think that this should be enough. It should be enough.
to force the EFF to now prioritize South Africa. It should be enough. It should be enough. If the elections, if the results of the elections were not enough, I think this should be enough to make the EFF to say that, guys, these people that we have been defending, this ideology of ours is not being accepted in Africa. It looks like the leaders in Africa are not in line with this one Africa, one ideology thing. This this ideology of ours of going to foreign lands and and start telling them what they sh- what, what they should do. It looks like it's not landing. Maybe 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 this is going to be enough. It's going to be enough. So it's going to be interesting to see what Julius Malema is going to say to respond to this brutal attacks from the Zanu PF Minister of Information. Guys, so please tell me what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button and the most important part is subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso. I will see you next time. Bye bye.